Put your hat on, man. I got to do the same thing. Yeah, man. Wear that hat, man. You got to wear the hat. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I got to get, I'm going to get one of those. I'm going gonna... to send one. <laughs> send, send it to me then, because I want it. You must be talking about that linchpin life. Well, I'm excited about today. I've been uh, following uh, this guy for a little bit here now. He's kind of making a lot of noise in the industry. Uh, I call him the the new the uh, the new cult fan. <laughs> I mean, in terms of. Uh, uh, of a company that people are starting to just make it their own. It's uh, it, it's it's a streaming company. It's a film company. It's a, it, what I like with this being B Black History Month. He's a yes, he's, yes. he's a CEO of a publicly traded company. Let's welcome him, Edwin Sylvan of Sycamore Entertainment Group. How you doing, man? I'm doing really well. Thank you for having me today. Thank you oh, man, we're me. excited to have you. Um, there's a lot we can talk about. So I'm going to try to stay focused today. But at the I'm end of the day, that. someone could interview you for about six hours, man. You've got so much information <laughs> and so much that you've done. Uh, I've Thank been you. doing some research on you, man. Let me tell you something. Um, you go all the way back to, I mean, you, you always had a vision and a dream to have a publicly traded company, it looks like. Yes. Um, Let's talk about that for a minute because I think, you know, there are not a lot of black publicly traded companies. If I decided personally uh -huh. that I was going to invest, I'd either have to go with Urban One or a couple of banks. <laughs> but in terms yes. of the entertainment business, I think you're kind of all by yourself in that world as a publicly traded company. So how does that feel? Uh, listen, it feels amazing to be able to, to be able to have that opportunity to be the CEO of a public traded company. I know we're one of 10 in the industry. Um, before me, it was Bob Johnson at BET and a couple of the other banks that were publicly traded, but there was nobody out there that was founded and was running and was in control of public companies that looked like me. I come from a finance background. I'm going on 30 something years in the business of being in the public markets. And from working in that industry, I saw that that was the platform for true wealth creation to either be owning shares in public companies or being the head of public companies and empowering people to the growth and the, and the, and in the upswing of, of your stock that brings true wealth. So to be, to be in this small group of people that are owning and controlling a publicly traded company, I'm honored to be able to do that. But the most exciting thing about it all is the fact that I can take the knowledge that I've learned from the whole experience and share it with other people that look like me and let them know that this opportunity exists for them too. I think one of the greatest things that I can share with anybody, uh, mm -hmm. people of color and, and disenfranchised is financial literacy. I think that's the key to shrinking that wealth gap, which is plaguing us as a people from the beginning of time. Now, for me, I'm actually shocked when I think about that this it's taken so long for us to get to this particular point for someone to be yeah. trading a, this kind of company. Like, what's taken us so long? Why Why do we not figure out that, this, that, that, that Wall Street and, and that's the way to, to really, I guess, benefit if you have a business, if you're trying to run a company, if you want it to be successful, because now help me if I'm wrong. What happens is whenever they need money, they can offer shares and raise right. money pretty quickly to right. fund whatever it is that they're trying to do for the company. To me, that right. just seems like a no brainer. So what's going on with all these black business owners who, who choose not to go public? You know, again, it, it's education. If you don't know, you don't know. And I think that there's a there's a level of fear of Wall Street because there's all these crazy numbers and finance and and and, and accounting and, and we didn't we didn't grow up like that as a people. Very few people that 
look like us in our community, in our family, were ever attached to Wall Street or finance. So we couldn't speak to our uncles or our brothers and our sisters. We just had no way of having access to that. So, the, so there was no learning that was passed down. So there was, there was no bridge to be able to get over that learning hump. Um, I, I was in the same position, but I was determined to be able to, to get that information. So I went down and I literally pounded the pavement, literally knocking on doors on the equivalent of Wall Street, which is Bay Street where I'm from. And I was okay. just asking for a job until I got, until I got a job in a mailroom at an insurance company that was trading publicly. And that gave me access to the trading desks and to the, and to the language and to the vernacular of the industry. And, and it, it allowed me to walk onto the trading floor and all that exciting stuff. And from there, the interest, I fell in love. And a lot of people don't have that exposure in our community. And that's why they just grew without it. And, and that, and so through no fault of their own, they just weren't exposed. And I think now with social media and, and people like myself sharing that information, I think now they're going to be able to pick up on it and take it from there. And, and that's, again, that's what I'm so excited about. Now, when people think about CEOs of companies, a lot of times they think he's hard to reach. He doesn't respond, <laughs> that kind of thing. But you seem to be the people's champ. <laughs> you know, it's a uh, word on the street. <laughs> <laughs> anybody can talk you're to you right. you'll talk to people you're you're down to earth you, you got meek mills shouting you out i mean <laughs> what's how did you do it like how did you get so connected where people there there's nothing but great things about you as a person um thank you from, from I, what I really i've been told mm -hmm. i really appreciate that um you know what if you're running a public company it's about the people you need to be able to instill confidence in people in order for them to give them your hard-earned money. At the end of the day, the shareholders of Sycamore are my investment bankers. They're my loan brokers. They're my financial people because Wall Street as a, as a whole wasn't giving money to people like me. So in order to get that money, I had to go to the people and and get their confidence in order for them to make the decision to give me their money and trust and trust me with their money and we all grow together. So, so that's how it is. There's no way that you can separate the company from the people. The people are the company. I understood that very, very early on and I just cultivated my community of shareholders because there is no separation between me and them. We're all on the same side of the table. We're all working towards the same goal. And to the extent that I understood that, I saw that as a great opportunity to touch the people. And as far as the relationships go, I, I also did, I went to Hollywood and I developed those relationships and I just went out and met people. I'm a very social person that we connected over Twitter. So yeah, it's just a yeah. way to do business. Yeah. It, it seems like that you, you, I mean, you have a lot of friends in the industry as well. Like one of the things I, I that uh, I wanted to ask you personally was, you know, sure. you obviously want to help fund black talent uh, right. that gets overlooked. So yes. my question to you is, um, what's any any great talents out there right now that we that you're working on that you're going to be putting out that uh, you're very excited about, especially with the new streaming service, which we'll get into that as well. Absolutely. There's there's an up and there's there's a there's a breakout filmmaker, writer, director. His name is Tyrone Dixon. He is, he's just about to make a breakout. He's been working under the tutelage of a Preston Holmes who behind films like Girls Trip and Malcolm X and some, and, and a lot of the Spike Lee movies you know and love. Uh, oh, yeah. That was Preston. Uh, uh, Tyrone Dixon is ready to make his breakout debut film. It's called Scouts, The Adventures of Troop 242. And those are the types of talents that I'm working with. Uh, he's also working on the on, on the on the making of a film called Roll Bounce that we all know and love. So you're going to okay. see him on that, and, and and we're just touching the community because there's thousands of quality filmmakers out there looking for an opportunity, and Sycamore is here to be able to give them a voice. Now, as you've taken this stance into the streaming world, right? Yeah. There's a lot of streaming services out there now. I mean, tons of them. And, yes, and you even had you even had Amazon just pay for uh, for uh, Eddie Murphy's piece a ton of money. Yes, you know it's very competitive. Yes. So, what's going to separate your company, Sycamore Entertainment Group, 
uh, from other streaming services. What separates us right away is the fact that we're, we're a lifestyle ideology and brand that happens to stream movies. That's where it begins. Um, it, again, it's about the people. We all can get the same films. In fact, we just put out a press release just yesterday saying that we're now connected to Ubiquity, which is connected to the studio. So we have all that product. So how are you gonna differentiate yourself? You're gonna differentiate yourself by making the people part of a brand and telling their greater stories. And if you can get people to, to be part of this tribe and to have a vested financial interest in the, in, the, in the company as we go forward, that immediately separates us from the pack. A lot of people watch Netflix, but how many people own Netflix shares? A lot of people use Apple telephones. How many people own Apple shares? We all use Amazon. Do you own the stock? With Sycamore, it's a movement. It's about financial literacy and growing together and being about the people. That right there is how we separate ourselves from the pack. It seems like that message is becoming clear. Like, you know, how Reddick and GameStop became that stock for Reddick and, and uh, became the uh, really a yeah. national news story. It seems like your company, SEGI, people know you by that. They know you by that ticker yes. symbol, <laughs> has become that culture yeah, for the right. hip hop community. Seems like the hip hop community is right. like, you know how you got to have the medallion with the Jesus piece? It's like, well, if you if you hit, you <laughs> own some SEGI as well. <laughs> you, how did you do that? How did it... You know what? I, I, it's, you know, I really appreciate the, the love because, you know, we were working hard at this. We knew we had to do it from the grassroots and we just, we just wanted to cultivate the people who haven't been heard, you know, Black people as a whole, we have a tremendous amount of buying power. We're great spenders. We like to go out and spend money as a people, but we have very little ownership in the things that we invest in. And I wanted to change that with Sycamore Entertainment. And that's how we built this thing and are building this thing to be part of that community. And I'm attached to the hip hop community. I was around when hip hop first started. So that's the community that I'm latching onto and looking to, to be able to share our message because we're, we are pop culture. So our message is spread through pop culture. So I wanna be part of that message uh, and send that message to the pop culture through them. And it's pretty cool that you're, you're focused on that entertainment aspect in the films, but also reminding people that you know what you can actually own this company and be a part of that Correct. that's new that's new to black folks you know folks are saying hey uh i can own a company i can buy the stock and and you've already made a couple of people already made some people rich by the way but i ain't gonna say nothing about that you know uh, that's because they knew about you before everybody else knew about you you know but you, your, your stock has been climbing and uh making people uh happy so that buzz is out there um, Correct. I mean, and that's what it's about. How do you handle that, though? That because aren't there rules? Like, there's only so much you can do as a publicly traded company in terms of what you can say, and you being so close to it. What's the risk you run? And and because they, I mean, they're taking ownership of you. You got little pumps manager bragging about <laughs> you and putting out many shares he owns right on Twitter. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. You know what? I, I know the rules. I'm, I'm a student of the rules of the game. Um, <clears throat> Sycamore is operates in one of the most regulated industries in the world, which is the financial industry. So to be a CEO, you have to know those rules and you have to operate within them. And I'm very comfortable doing that. And I'm very comfortable communicating with people knowing those rules. And once you have that in a, in a nice tight box, you're free to do whatever you want around that. So I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to share. And, I'm, and I want people to be able, for the first time, to be able to grow with a company that has our uh, agenda and message attached to it, and everybody can be a part of it. So, so I, I don't feel any risk at all in terms of doing or saying something that's going to hurt the brand or hurt individuals because my my experience has taught me uh, 
what not to do and my being a student of the industry and the rules that it operates in allows me to function in a way that is natural to me. Now let's let's move into today's time because I know you know you can't go anywhere now and not hear about cryptocurrency, blockchain, right. Bitcoin, right. Dogecoin, you know, Ripple. It seems like so are you gonna be the first to fund a movie completely with with a with a Bitcoin payment? Is that is that is that is that even possible or am I just overthinking this thing? No, you know what it's happening. Happening. It's 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 way ahead of me for sure. It's way ahead of Sycamore. Um, it's going to become the norm. You know, there's so many different companies working on that technology, and they're doing a great job of it. And there's and they're paving the way for companies like us to come in and and have all of those kinks smoothed out. So by the time we get there, the transition for us is easy. Just like our transition into streaming, the people that were ahead of us, the, the Netflix and all those companies, they were ahead of us. And, the, and they, they brought technology to a point where we came in and we were able to quickly implement that technology and get on board. It's the same for crypto. It's the same for blockchain. And those, those are very smart guys way up front and they deserve everything that they get in terms of wealth creation for themselves and the people who followed them. And we're just following in the slipstream. But that possibility to be able to fund a movie using blockchain and Erythium and those, and those platforms is already happening and we're just gonna slip right in there when the opportunity presents itself and when the legislation and the securities laws allow it to be done in such a way that everybody's protected. Man, that, that sounds great. Listen, I, I know there could be someone young watching this and they're sitting somewhere thinking, I wanna run a publicly traded company. I never even thought it was possible. What would you say to that young person who they see themselves they look at Elon Musk, they look at, you know, yes. Warren Buffett, they look at these guys and they say, right. I want to be a CEO of a multi-million billion dollar company one day, but I don't even think it's possible for me. What right. will they, what will they need to do to get started? You know what, because of the technology that's available to us right now, a lot of the information is free and it's public. And just like how Elon Musk knew nothing about space travel and launching rockets into space. People asked him, how did you do it? And he said, I read the books. He read the rocket, the books written by rocket scientists. And now he's himself a rocket scientist. I give that advice to any, any kid that looks like me or, or even doesn't look like me that wants to run a public company, read the books. You know, read the you books. can go, okay. and, yeah, you can go and educate yourself and read the, the, the financial statements of these companies, learn the vernacular, learn the language, learn the terms. And when you're ready, you can go and get formal education to be able to enter into this industry. And then you can go from, you can go from there on, on the process. It's, it's, it's the information is out there. You just have to be able to seek it and you shall find it. Now, if people want to watch uh, Segi TV, they want to you know, stream it. What do they need to do in order to do that? Because it might be like, I don't know where it is. Talk to us about that. It's, it's quite simple. The best way to be able to watch Segi TV is to go to Segi.tv, which is our website. And on there, you'll see all of the platforms that we're on. And you just have to be able to click on there. It'll take you to the app store for your respective app, what your platform is. Download the app and away you go. It's free to watch because we are supported by uh, uh, advertisers. It's called an uh, AVOD model, advertising video on demand, and the way you go. So just go to Segi TV and uh, Segi.tv and go click your link to whatever platform you're using and you'll be up in no time. Man, that sounds great. I appreciate you for giving us time to hang out. Now, I, I wanna close out. I, I really believe that you're gonna be the culture, <laughs> the culture logo now, it's like, you know, um, everyone was talking about Lori Harvey the other day uh, mm -hmm. when Michael B. Jordan ate a big thing because he showed out for Valentine's Day. He rented out a, you know, a, a, a he rented out some kind of uh, what was it a, an aquarium, and then yes. he bought, bought her some stocks. <laughs> yes. you, you know, he didn't buy the bag; he bought a stock. So I could imagine that you, you're going to be kind of similar to that. Like everybody's going to be like, "Hey, if you're hip, you're awesome." some SEGI, they go along with the records, you know, cause that's kind of what it feels like you're setting up for. That's what yeah. it's like with the people that I speak to. 
Um, yes, absolutely. Like, you, you got that. You got that SCGI. You, you better get in now. They ain't gonna be here forever. You know. So you're right. How does yeah. how does that feel that you're you're changing, you're impacting hip hop in a different way, in a level yes. that we don't really even think about. You know what? I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be able to even have the opportunity. It feels amazing to be able to impact something in such a way. Um, you know, I, I, I seen some, you know, I grew up with 50 and I grew up with, you know, Dr. Dre and these guys and, and what we need to know about these individuals, as much as they made money making records, a lot of their wealth was created by ownership in companies like Apple and Coca-Cola with vitamin water. They were shareholders, and that's where a lot of their wealth come. P. Diddy is a shareholder in, in, a, in a company that makes a alcohol. Um, so we have to be able to spread that message. And, I, and how I feel, I feel honored, and I feel privileged, and I feel blessed to be able to be able to offer this to the community. And I want everybody to just um, come and learn. And, and if you have any questions, I'm at, at Sycamore Films on Twitter. Hit me up. You know I respond, and we'll yes, uh, we take it from there. Amen. Thank you. This is Edwin Sylvan, <laughs> the CEO of Sycamore Entertainment Group. You're going to be hearing a lot about him. I promise you they're doing a lot of big things. Thank you for spending time with us and hanging out with us today here.